Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I sat down and did a little intro for our room tours, but I also wanted to do a quick intro for what's on our iPads. So I've been meaning to do this video for a long time now, but I'm finally just getting around to it. So today I'm just gonna share with you what is on their iPad. I'm just going to show you one of their iPads because they're pretty much the same. Um, my oldest has the newer iPad that has the most amount of storage on it. So he has a few extra things than my younger son does on his iPad and that's just because there's more storage on his. So I'm just going to show you one of our iPads. All of those apps are on both iPads as well as on my phone because my daughter uses my phone if she needs to complete any work on an app or do any practice on an app. But I'm just going to show you one iPad and the things that we have on it. The first app that we have is Phonics Genius. We've had this one for a while and we really like it. Um, it's basically like flashcard type format uh, that are separated by the sound blends and the blends are highlighted. Um, you can also change the settings so that they're not highlighted. They are able to listen to the speaker read the words and they're also able to record the words themselves. Each stack of flashcards is full of words that use that letter blend but you can also add words to each stack if you like. Cursive Practice is next. It's a pretty basic app and yet very effective I feel like. They're able to practice uppercase, lowercase, um, words, sentences, and even numbers. They practice using both their finger and then a stylus as well. The next one we have is called Flow Grammar. This one's a little tricky to find in the App Store, but we've just started getting into diagramming sentences, so it has been perfect for us. It's basically a sentence building app. And I love that it lays out all of the parts of speech, some that we've already covered and then many that we haven't covered just yet. You're able to adjust the settings and create challenges. That way they can practice building sentences using different parts of speech. The next couple of apps I have are the Mind Stacks apps. I really like these. They're just games for the kids, but they're um, really great for building their vocabulary. One is just the kids' vocab, and the other one is the SAT version. I think this one has been great for adding a few challenge words to the mix. The next one we have is the Spelling Bee app. Um, I don't love this app so much, but it does the, it does the job. Um, you're able to alphabetize. Um, they have a spelling swarm. They have a honeycomb scramble and a spelling bee. Um, you can customize it. They can study the words. Um, so yeah, it does the trick. It's not my absolute favorite, but and sometimes it gets stuck and they get a little frustrated with it. And also another thing I don't really love is that when the app dictates the words to them, sometimes it's not very clear what it is. And so they get it incorrect because the app isn't very clear. The speaking voice isn't very clear. They have pre-programmed lists that are already available. And I believe that they're separated by grade level. But then you can also create a new list of your own. Next, we have our Motion Math Pizza. This is a really fun app that we just recently got. It's a pizza shop and it's a good introduction for them in business and money exchange. They have to calculate cost of doing business, replenish ingredients, set the cost of the ingredients, calculate sales. I like that they show calculations and also pie charts and bar graphs. I think it's a really well constructed app. Next up they have their Splash Math app. We've had this for a bit of time. We use this as a main source of curriculum for us and we love it so much. We are able to toggle between grade levels. They head straight to the categories that we'll be practicing for the day, whether it be time, measurement, money. I think this app gives great positive reinforcement and they also have a section for showing your work, which is a bonus. Next up is our Duolingo app. This is a fan favorite right now, a family favorite right now. They are on this app all the time. They get to toggle back and forth between different languages, but in general, my younger son is breezing through the French program, and then my older son is going through the German program. The lessons are laid out extremely well, and the app does a really great job at encouraging practice for fluency. Next, we have the Starwalk Kids app. This is an app that I got because we were starting our solar system unit. This app was really 
a great addition to our solar system unit. There were cute little animated videos and just the right amount of interactive features to keep the kids engaged. Adding apps like this to our unit studies is really helpful. Having different resources that reinforce the information that they're learning during the unit study makes the kids really excited about what we're learning even more. Next we have our Hello Atlas app. The kids are able to pick languages from all different parts of the world. It's just been another fun way for them to explore different parts of the world. This app was a great little accompaniment to the book. Next up we have our Brain Pop app. I used this in the beginning of our homeschool. Brain Pop actually has a subscription that goes along with the app. We no longer have the subscription that gives you full access to every video in the library, but they do give you free access to one new video a month. It's called the Feature Movie and we just take advantage of that. Next we have the app Quiz for Kids. My kids really love this app. It's just a little game show type app where there are quick lessons corresponding questions and the kids have a lot of fun pretending they're on the game show. I think I had to pay 99 cents to unlock all of the categories. There was wild animals, fairy tales, geography, professions, science, food, and astronomy. Next up we have our quick math apps. Before I found these apps we just did this type of thing verbally but these apps have been great for introducing more complex concepts as well as great for more independent work and nice that they can track their progress. They've also been able to adjust the levels from beginner to intermediate and so on and so forth as they feel comfortable. Next up we have our Explain Everything app. This is not going to be one that everybody is completely into but we like it a lot. It's basically a whiteboard type of app that also has the ability to record your actions. It's great for creating presentations, both for the teacher and for the student. This is one of those apps that really enhances their creativity, and I'm really, really glad I found it. Next, we have Netflix, of course. They have a separate profile that is full of saved programs and movies. There are quite a few documentaries, and a lot of times we just have these type of things playing in the background while we paint, while they build with Legos. In their home bar, we start with the Evernote app. This is where we keep all of their plans and record most of their day's work. Next, we have the Notability app. This is how we complete their worksheets and a lot of their main curriculum work. I do have a video on how we complete our worksheets using the Notability app, and I'll try and link it above. Next, we have their Epic app. We just started using this one this year and it's been a really nice addition to our library. We go to the library quite often, but it's really nice to have another selection of books and other programs at their fingertips. Next up we have our What's Today app. I think that's what it's called. This one might be kind of hard to find in the app store as well, but I like it because it's simple and straight to the point. We used to complete our morning calendar work inside of our daily binders but I've found it to be so much easier than finding this app. They select the day of the week, the date, they're able to fill in their own schedules and even draw a little picture. And the last thing they have on their home bar is their beginner's Bible. We actually don't use this quite as much as we used to just because they know all the stories from end to end, but every now and then they'll surprise me and revisit some of the stories. On the next page we have a lot of our Tiny Bop apps. There's Earth, Simple machines, plants, the human body, mammals, homes, skyscrapers, space. I really like this collection of apps because it's just nice for them to kind of explore and kind of discover on their own. Um, it's very interactive. There's like the perfect amount of information coupled with lots of nooks and crannies to explore and discover. The next set of apps I have, I think there's four of them, is the Meet Science apps. This first one is Magnetism and Electricity. I really like these apps. There's a space where they can play a few games. They have a glossary um, and even a spot for experiments. The main section is the place where they learn about magnetism and electricity or what, whichever is highlighted in whichever app you've selected. They do a really great job explaining the concepts in a nice, fun way. 
The glossary is great for explanation, of course, and then vocabulary building. And the experiments have been so fun. Sometimes we complete some of the experiments along with the videos and sometimes they just watch them and we discuss. I was really impressed with the way they lay out the experiment section. It's just a nice addition to the app. The second one is about light and sound. The third one being force and motion. And the last one being work and energy. Next up we have This Is My Body. It's an anatomy app for kids. It's just another explorative type of app. Is explorative a word? <laughs> that I thought would be great to go along with our body unit. I really like finding random companion apps like apps that go along with uh, books or programs in museums. This app is about the monarch butterfly. Just something quick and simple. Next we have this interactive telling time app. A lot of times I'll just get the basic version of the app and if I see that they are playing it quite a bit then I consider upgrading it. But there are so many times where the basic version of the app is just fine. So in this one they just set the time on this cute little lion clock. Pretty simple. Next up we have their Marco Polo app. It's just a weather app that they have a lot of fun playing with. It's helped them understand the concept of the temperature and how to dress appropriately. Next is this Match and Learn app. We've had this one for quite some time. I used it when my son was very little and now my daughter uses it. So it's just fun when she needs a little extra something to do and we can play it together. I include apps for my daughter on both of my son's iPads for convenience mainly. Next up we have our Khan Academy app. We use this quite a bit as well when I need some help explaining certain concepts and it's just really nice to have on their iPad so that if they happen to stumble across lessons that's a win in my book. The last page is mostly full of apps for my preschooler. The first one is this A to Z music videos by ABC Mouse. We love this so much. This was an awesome way for the kids to learn beginning letter sounds. We know all of these videos by heart. Along with the ABC Mouse, we also have all of the ABC Mouse books. These were great for teaching my sons to read on their own. I mentioned this in my How My Kids Learn to Read video. So I also have these downloaded on here for her. The next one is our Duck Duck Moose reading app. My daughter loves this app. It helps her with recognizing beginning sounds vowels, etc. Next we have my tried and true interactive alphabet. I cannot love this app enough. I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing about this one. These next two are awesome vocabulary, beginning vocabulary builders. The endless reader and endless word play app. My boys have already made their way completely through these apps, but we still sometimes use them for fun dictation sentences while my preschooler is working her way through them. We try our best to do as much as possible together. And I must say, I just love looking at this app. <laughs> they are so cute, the illustrations are so cute, and they're just a lot of fun to use with the kids. We also have the Endless Numbers, which has been perfect for beginner math. Next up, we have Moose Math. This is another great one for my preschooler. Making the smoothies are her favorite. Then next are all of our ABC Mouse books. This folder here is just our folder for languages. Like I said, they mainly use their Duolingo app, but we have a few other apps for switching things up a bit. The words are separated by category. You can switch between languages. So mostly they are doing the Spanish, French, and German, and they have a lot of fun with those. Next, I have a folder for the kid tools. It's just the basic apps that the kids use the most. So we have the photos, the note-taking app, the camera, the clock, the maps, iMovie, their calendar, and their messages. Now, we use these basic apps quite a lot as we learn. They take photos of their work throughout the day. They take any notes that they don't write down physically. Um, they can put inside of their note-taking app. Um, we use the clock app to time lessons. 
and explore the time in different parts of the world. They use their Maps app to explore where we are in relation to other countries and cities and states. They are always making new Lego movies and stop motion films. Our days of the week, months of the year, we do in our calendar app mostly. And they do a lot of spelling practice and writing practice, sending text messages to friends and family. So these are actually basic tools that we use quite often and have a big impact in our homeschool. There is one more folder, and that's just a folder that I tuck all of the other apps into, and it's called Mommy's Corner. I use this one to put apps like Pinterest and things like that. And that is it, you guys. We finally made it to the end of this very, very long video. But this is basically everything that they have on their iPad. Hands down, the iPad is our favorite tool slash resource that we use in our homeschool, and we love it so much. It has really done nothing but add to our homeschool. So thank you guys so much for sticking in to the end here. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. And I will see you in our next video.